Dr. Zahir Shah joins us for more on this. He's a primary care physician in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, Dr. Shaw, it's really great to have you back. Um, there's not just skepticism about this drug, but America's top infectious disease expert, uh, Dr. Fauci, says he worries that all of this hype is going to spur a shortage. I have to say, we were told the same thing early on about the effectiveness of these masks. So what's your take on this? Well, it, hydroxychloroquine is sort of an interesting wrinkle in the pharmacology of this current pandemic. It was brought to the world stage by a very limited set of case studies that were brought out by a relatively controversial French researcher who reported that as a result of putting patients on a combination of hydroxychloroquine which is really an old-time malaria medication, as well as a medication used for an sundry of autoimmune diseases, including lupus, that he was able to get patients to recovery and PCR negative for evidence of the virus responsible for COVID-19 in up to 93, 94% of the cases. And that sounds intuitively like really good news, particularly because you have to understand the entire world right now is drowning. And to a drowning man or woman, even a straw looks like there's a possibility of hope or salvation there. But here is the problem with relying on anecdotal case studies, and that is this. The death rate currently, as we understand it, associated with COVID-19 is somewhere between 1% to 3%. What that means is that even if you do nothing, or instead you give someone something as benign as chalk, or as sugar, that 97% of those individuals, because the mortality rate we know, if we do absolutely nothing, is only one to 3%, therefore 97% will do better. And that's why giving anecdotal evidence about the use of any regimen and claiming that you had a 93% or 94% success rate is, I believe, really frankly misleading. And it was the beginning of this rush towards hydroxychloroquine. We now know that it's on back order in large swaths of our country. And legitimate patients that need it for legitimate reasons aren't able to get it. The other thing that I want to quickly point out about hydroxychloroquine is that it is not benign. It has adverse side effects that can be potentially serious, perhaps the most serious being arrhythmias, uh, something we call the prolongation of the QT interval that can go on to cause life-threatening arrhythmias as a result of this drug. So it's not a benign drug, and we should not be promoting it without good science. We really appreciate you breaking that down for us, Dr. Sahir. I want to ask you about something else that's probably on the on the minds of a lot of Americans right now. There's a lot of mixed messaging when it comes to whether Americans should be wearing a face mask or not. And that actually applies, obviously, to to the whole global pandemic. Um, experts are saying that the virus can spread through talking and even just breathing. Should we be wearing masks outside? What does the science say on this? Well, I think it's interesting that the CDC has done essentially an about face in its recommendations. If you may recall, early on in this pandemic, both the CDC and our Surgeon General went on record to recommend that the general public not utilize masks. Now, some of those recommendations, I think, were founded on a legitimate concern that because there were shortages in the accessing of masks by healthcare professionals, that if a recommendation were to go out by an organization or entity as significant as the CDC or by our Surgeon General, that there may be a further rush on any available masks and thereby limit the masks that may be available to our healthcare providers. I don't know if there was any good science to ever support the idea that the general public should not be using masks. Now that the more clear understanding of how the, the virus responsible for COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, is transmitted from person to person, that it doesn't just require a cough or a sneeze, but rather can it be transmitted simply by standing near one another or by simply having a conversation, I think it clearly justifies the usage of a mask by the general public, particularly in those settings 
settings where a six feet distance cannot be maintained, for example, in mass transit or on grocery stores or in pharmacies, other places where people, despite the recommendations in place for social isolation, still need to go in order to gather essentials. That's where masks should absolutely be utilized. All right, Dr. Shaw, we really appreciate your expertise. Thanks so much for that.